Today I want to talk about build your life on the rock. We're going to look at two things. It's a two-part message. One's on temptation, to defeat temptation out of your life, to whoop it and get it behind you. Can I have an amen? And next, I'm going to talk about the tithes, so put your seatbelt on, okay? And don't run out on me. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, Pastor Ryan, I just want to open in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace, your mercy uh, that abides uh, towards us and in us, that this church is blessed of you. Uh, Lord, I just thank you that... Uh, you have the words that pertain to life and godliness, that, that steer us, that lead us, that build us, that encourages us, that delivers us. And uh, we just give you uh, all the glory and all the praise today in Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So Pastor Ryan, a couple weeks ago, he spoke this scripture, and it's been brewing in me for the last two weeks. And, and in this thing, I don't want to dawdle in my life. I, I, I want to get to the level of God. Come on. What is that? Holiness. So let's, I want to read this. I didn't give it to the, the, the team in the back, but uh, it's 1 Peter 1.13. It says, Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lusts, as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy. Amen? amen. amen. Glory to God. That's there for us. All right, amen? You're not whooped. You're not beaten. You're, 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 amen. Amen. We're striving to be holy, and we will be holy. Glory to God. Because it is written, be holy, for I am holy. So uh, as he said that, and I, I just, I've been mulling on that. I've been meditating on the Word of God in that capacity. And um, see, the world gives us some distractions and evil ways, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh. And like I said in the first service, uh, the Word of God is a highway to life. It never ends. The Word of God is eternal. This world will pass away. But the Word of God is the highway to life. But how many of you know there's every mile of highway, there's two miles of ditch? <laughs> Interesting. Where do I find myself? Am I on the highway to life? Or did I steer off into a ditch somewhere through temptation or whatever it may be? Because I'll tell you what, the Word of God, Jesus is reaching out in that ditch. He's your tow rope. Amen? He's your tow truck. Glory to God. To get you back on the road to life. Amen, church? The thing is, let's not be in a ditch too long. That's, that's the key. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. So now, I just want to I want to read this uh, in Ephesians 2, 3. Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Do you see that as you, f you, you meddle around in garbage and it gets into your mind, but you got a hard time purging that thing? you got a hard time getting that out. The, the Bible calls us to renew our minds daily, amen? But the thing is, if, I'm, if this thing's on me and it's in me, i got a hard time getting rid of it, amen? Uh, church, don't look at me like that because we all fight through temptation, each and every one of us. I don't know what it is, anger, bitterness, uh, whatever, drugs, alcohol, uh, porn, whatever it, whatever it is. But we all struggle through temptation. Amen? There's an old man, it seems, that keeps trying to come back up into my life. And the thing is, i got to get rid of it. But I've, I've got a key here today that will help you, I believe, as you meditate on the Scripture and the passages we're going through today. It will set you free, and you'll be an overcomer in the area of temptation. Amen? See, God wants us to rise up out of the miry clay. He wants you to rise up out of the world's way. See, in, in, at the back end of that, I didn't read it, but it, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others in this world. We get that, church? God wants us to raise up to the level of holiness. It is not a choice. Yes. It's a have to. I, I want to walk with God. I want him to function in and through me. I want his favor upon me. I got to get to that level. Amen? Amen. Otherwise, I'm like a wave of the sea tossed to and fro, up and down, up and down. 
No, <laughs> good God, Lord, help me. So this, the passage we're going to go to today is James 1, verses 12 through 15. I, I taught this at the men's uh, retreat back in last March, I believe, but it, it stuck with me. Why? Because it gave me answers to beat the enemy. Amen? So let's go through it. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. The crown of life. Okay, hold on now. God, hallelujah, he knew you before you were in your mother's womb. Remember Jesus said, for the prize that is set before me, at the cross he knew you. We are known by God a long time ago. But you know what? Now is your time. Why? Now you're alive. Amen? Glory to God. Amen. So now what? In your life, you want to glorify God. Can I have any man? I, I, I got a hunker and that doesn't quit. I want to do more for God. I, it, it doesn't stop. Amen. I don't know about you. I, I just, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm content. Don't get me wrong. But there's so much more. Amen? God's a much more God. And I want to live a life that brings him glory. Come on. Can I have an amen, church? Amen. Glory to God. We're alive today. Amen? And this is our time. Life is short. I, I, I'm 61. I, it's like I got my driver's license yesterday. <laughs> I'm, I remember just about hitting a car and my dad, you know, he's giving me that big look. I, I just, my God. <laughs> but that feels like yesterday. But this life is fleeting. It's like a vapor, the Bible says. But what am I going to do today to honor God? This day. Amen. So I want us to hunker down in this thing because I want us to be temptation overtakers and overcomers. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. All right, so now, let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. That doesn't come from God, amen? But each one is tempted, this is it here, when he is drawn away by his own desires. Is it the devil? No. What, what are you desiring? See, that, that, that set me free. That, there's a freedom in that. Why? Because it's self-constructed. What am I looking at? What am I doing? That's what, that's, that's what comes to me, church. We want to be overcomers of temptation. Amen? But what am I setting my focus on? Because it grows large in my heart and my mind. Amen? i got to cut off the triggers that get me hooked into temptation. Let's carry on. I want to carry on here. By his own desires and enticed. What's enticed? I, I, I use this analogy. You go fishing, you got the best bait, you got the best lure because you want to catch the biggest fish. <laughs> Amen? But you know what the enemy does? Same thing. Amen? He sets that thing. And what, I, I'm, am I going to cut it off? Because if I start, it'll grow bigger and I can't stop. I need the power of God, but I need self-discipline. Amen? to identify the triggers that lead me in the wrong direction. Amen, church? Amen. <clears throat> so then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death, separation from God. You suppress the Holy Spirit as you continu continue down the road of temptation. As that thing continues to drag you down, there, there's a disconnect and, and, and you stress that relationship. You suppress the Holy Spirit that lives in me, and it grows distance. His voice grows distant in my life, yes. and I struggle. I'm like a wave of the sea. Church, it's just awesome. During the week, I'm a submarine. Up, uh, down. No, uh, uh. <laughs> Lord, help me. Hallelujah. But church, just, just anchor onto this thing and realize these evil desires and temptations come from within. What I'm focusing on in my life, what am I doing? Amen? So just receive that, but, but meditate on the Word. Don't just read it over, but mull it over. Think of this thing, day in, day out. That's meditation. And the Lord, He deposits answers, and He deposits strength. Amen? The Holy Spirit will work in you on this. Can I have an amen, church? Amen. God bless you. Now, temptation, I'm just going to give you a... 
a definition of it. It's a thing or a course of action that attracts you or tempts someone. Is temptation a sin? No, temptation is not a sin. However, our sinful nature is constantly swaying us to give into temptation, which in turn can lead us down a path of sin. Bottom line, sin is a choice. Sin is a choice. It's not forced upon you. Uh Uh-uh. It's a choice that you walk into. Doing my part to keep myself close to God and protecting my relationship, protecting my relationship with God, that's vital. That's numero uno. Amen? Amen. Be equipped to beat temptation. Where, Where do you get your equipment from? Amen? I must be girded and supported by the Word of God daily. It's my daily manna. Hallelujah. Relating and fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. Value your relationship with God. Value your relationship with God. What does that do? Brings it right to the top. Amen? You can make money. You can do whatever you can in this life. That's fine. But, But numero uno is having God with you day in and day out. Amen? I got to be about his word. Otherwise, there's a distance that sets in and temptation takes over. No, we are temptation defeaters. Amen? Glory to God. And so I just want to go on this last scripture in regards to this, Proverbs 4.20. It says, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. How do you build your heart? Eyes, ears, mouth, word in. Eyes, ears, out. Mouth, word in. Amen? That's how you build. Amen? Hallelujah. Faith comes by hearing and by hearing of the word of God. Amen? If there's no word before me, you're not building no faith. Amen? Church? Glory to God. So let's carry on. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence. I'm the steward of my life. I'm the one who watches the doorstep. What I allow in or not. Amen? Church, that's stewardship. Preparation of the heart belongs to man. The answer of the tongue is of the Lord. Preparation of the heart is my responsibility. God's functioning in and through me after that. He speaks through me. He functions through me. Amen? Glory to God. That's that's Proverbs 16.1. Hallelujah. So now I'm just going to finish with Proverbs. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of its spring the issues of life. What's an issue of life? Temptation. Out of your heart spring the issues of life. Hallelujah. Put away from you a deceitful mouth and put perverse lips far from you. How in God's green earth do I expect Christ to work in and through me when I got garbage spewing out of my mouth? It doesn't work that way. No, he, it's, it's Christ in me. And, and I got I to gotta hold back the reins and squeeze this thing. Amen? Amen. Why? Because I'm, I'm Christ-like. Christ is living in me. Is he not? Christ in us, the hope of glory. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so now, church, I just, uh, there's another reference to this, Colossians 3. I'm not going to go there. Uh, Colossians 3, 11 to 1. Study and meditate the word of God. Amen? Be strong in your Christian identity. Be strong. Who am I? Oh, yeah, Ray, you're the moving guy. No, no, no. (laughs) I'm a son of the living God. Amen? But so many people identify with what they do. No, no. Amen? What did the Apostle Paul say, Galatians 2.20? I was crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who lives. Christ lives in me. Amen. This life I now live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and died for me. Amen. It's right here, church. That's your identity. Amen. Christ lives in me. This life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. Hallelujah. Temptation has no place in that. Amen, church? Glory to God. But it takes work. Amen. I got to work on that. Hallelujah. And so now let's, uh, I'm going to kind of change gear here. But I, I just pray you receive today on, on defeating and fighting off temptation. 
You, you got to do things. Uh, have someone that gives an account, an, a friend. You know, you're struggling, whatever it may be. But just have someone that's Christ-like connected to you in your life to help you fight through this. Amen? It is vital to maintain holiness in an upright relationship with God. Otherwise, you're what? In the ditch. No ditch living in this place. Uh Uh-uh. Life's too short. Amen? Glory to God. Okay, I want to go to Hebrews 11.6. So we're we're shifting gears into into tithe and, and, and living by faith. Amen? Tithe is a faith adventure. When you're a tithe... Excuse me. <laughs> Otherwise, you're just driving down the highway and putting your window down and throw your money out the window. <laughs> no, it's a faith adventure, amen? Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Honor the Lord. Amen? Glory to God. Okay, let's go on here. So Hebrews 11:6. but without faith, it'll come up here, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. See, the the part I want to focus on right here is, for he who comes to God must believe that he is. Do I believe that God is? Amen. That's the question I ask you today. And now after that, do you believe he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him? See, when I come to God, do I come to him with my whole being? Am I all in? Amen? Glory to God. And see, when you believe, do you believe he's a rewarder? Will he reward you as you walk in his ways? Are the promises of God yes and amen in your life as you you walk in his ways? Do I anticipate? Do I have an expectancy? Do I have a dribble from heaven? Or do I have an overflow from heaven? Hey, it's up to you. Amen? I'd like the overflow. Amen? Thank you. (laughs) Or do I got a little garden hose? Or do I got a fire hose from heaven? Hallelujah. I got an outpouring from God happening. How about you? Glory to God. Amen? I want the fire hose. Praise the Lord. And see now, commitment to the tithe, talking about the tithe, coming to God by faith. Amen? I believe in him, and I know he's a rewarder. Amen? The commitment to the tithe is a covenant connector. It connects you in covenant with God. I'm going to prove this through the word of God. Amen? You will go to new levels in your life. Hallelujah. The Lord's peace, the Lord's protection, and the Lord's provision will be about you. Amen? That's the blessing of the Lord. It resides in this house. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Why? We uphold the word of God. We live the word. The word's preached. Amen? Amen? Glory to God. I thank God for this house. Hallelujah. And see, now I want to look at our forefather Abraham, a pillar of faith. And there was a little bit of a problem. He divided land with his brother Lot, his nephew Lot, he said, hey, you choose where you want to go. So he took the best, visibly, I guess. Anyway, he left. But then there was a problem. He was taken captive in a battle. Uh, Kings Valley, there was a big battle. And uh, Abraham caught wind of this, that my nephew is caught. And uh, so what did he do? He rounded up his 318 trained servants that were born in his house. How do you have 318 servants in your house, like from his house? He, he, did he have a township? Did he own a city, Abraham? <laughs> like, glory to God. That's, that's huge. So now what did he do? He went out, got his men, and went out and, and defeated these kings, took the booty, got his, got his brother Lot back, amen, and, and he brought him back. And then what happened? Melchizedek, a high priest of God, king of Salem. That's king of peace, king of righteousness. And church, I I, I don't know, it it says there's no genealogy with this guy. But I believe Jesus Christ was right there. you You can argue with that, you can research that. But I really believe it was Jesus. And you know what I find fascinating, really fascinating? 
At that time, this is uh, 15 chapters into the Bible, Genesis, he brings out bread and wine. Where does that come from? What did I say? Covenant connector. Do we not participate in this house in bread and wine? That's your covenant connector. Amen? Covenant through Jesus Christ. But here, Abraham, he's breaking bread with Melchizedek. And, and I, I'd find that truly fascinating if that was Jesus. Why? Jesus was the one to come through the fulfillment of the test that he went through. I don't want to go on this, but Abram was tested. Remember his son on, on the altar to slew him? God said, no, no, no. We're in covenant. I'm going to bring my son to this earth. I'm going to set this earth free through my son. You keep your son. Glory to God. That's powerful. That's why you and I are here today. Amen? Hallelujah. So now I just, uh, I just find that awesome. And then what did he do? He professed these promises over him. He blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of God most high, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. Who has delivered your enemies into your hands. Abram saw that. What is that, church? That's the favor of the living God in battle. Amen? God made it happen. Do you have any battles in your life you're going through? Just asking. Amen? Allow God to deliver you. Allow his favor to get you out of that pickle. Amen? A lot of times we're so quick to do it on our own, but have some patience. Allow God to work on your behalf, church. Amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. So now at the victory, Abram gave God a tithe of all. King of, King of Sodom was there with him too, and he wanted to give Abram some stuff. And Abram said, no, 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 I'm not even going to take a, a sandal strap from you unless you say you made me rich. Uh-uh. It's God Almighty who's my source and brought the victory and all the things that I have, it's through God Almighty. He honored God with the tithe. Hallelujah. And see now, he could have brought attention to himself. Oh, look what I did. Look at the success I'm living in. Uh-uh. He glorified God at that time. Amen? That's powerful. What do we do today when we have a victory? I, I, I'm serious. People say, oh, you're lucky. What, what do you say? Yeah, I'm lucky? Pfft. Luck is demonic, church. It's got no origin. It's garbage. God, amen, is your source. If you live by the precepts and the word of the living God, I hope you give God the glory. Amen? amen. What I say is, I'm grateful. That's all I got to say. Grateful. Amen? Why? That steers the attention to God Almighty. Amen? amen? Remember that next time there's a victory in your life. It's not luck. It's not happenstance. It's God Almighty. Why? You're walking in His ways. He wants to bless you, church. Yeah, amen. amen? Glory to God. We got to get moving. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> okay, you're going to get half of it today. Good Lord. Okay. <laughs> okay, at the victory, he gave God a tithe of all. And uh, so now Abram now sees God Almighty as what? His source. A partnership with God forming. Distinguished himself between just a mere man to a man of God. He was just a mere man, but when he connected to God... He's now a man of God. Amen, church? There is men and women of God in this house. Amen? Why? You're connected through the tithe. If you're struggling with the tithe, please study. Meditate on it. Talk to God. Don't go distant from God. Draw yourself near to God. Amen? Because I want you connected with this. My wife and I, it's over a quarter century. We've honored God with the tithe without fail. Without fail. Business and personal. Without fail. All to the glory of God. He's blessed me beyond what I can ask or think. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you what. He's not a respecter of persons. He just doesn't do it for Ray Beaudry. No. He does it for us all. Amen? Amen. Trust in him. What do we talk about? If you believe in God. Amen. Do you believe in him? Because yes. he can and he's a what? A rewarder. Amen. Of those who diligently seek him. I'm seeking him with the tithe. Yes. By faith. 
Here you are, Lord God. I trust you. I just I want to finish with Abram, and then we're going to shut her down because time's moving on here. But what did he have? He had full trust, full obedience. Abram honored God. He identified God as his Lord. And I'll tell you what, it was not money or the systems of the world. God, I trust you. Here's the tithe. It's not the money. I thank you for it. It's not that. It's you, Lord God. What are my eyes on today? Do I trust in the Lord in the area of finances? Or is it all about me? I'll tell you what now, though, church. If it's something new for you, it takes stewardship. you got to steward. But, but stay hunkered down and in pursuit of God in this area. He'll set you free and he'll bless you. Amen? So once God sees Abram's heart, a promise is upon Abraham. God promises this to him. He says to him, do not be afraid, Abram. He's telling you, church, today, do not be afraid. He is your shield. He is your exceedingly great reward. What is that? I'm just going to close with this today. He's your defense. Amen? He's your defense. He watches everything around you. He cares for you. He's your protector. And your exceedingly great reward, he's your provider. I, I, how fast, how far, how deep do you want to go with God? Because as far and as deep as you want to go, he will be there. Church, stand to your feet this morning, please. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I know it's a sensitive topic, talking about tithe and church, but you know what? It's a connector. It's a lifeline to God. Amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. We give him praise today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I just pray, Lord, that there's seeds sown within our hearts, Lord God, that we'd take the time to, to study and meditate on your word, to further ourselves, Lord God, with you. Thank you, Lord, that we're building our lives on the rock the rock of revelation. And Lord, I just thank you for this people here today. I just pray that you'd bless them, encourage them this week, Lord God, and your favor rest upon this house this week in Jesus' name. We hope you enjoyed today's worship service. I'm the other Pastor Terry. If you're new here, we would love to meet you and have you introduce yourself at reginavictory.com. You can drop us a line and let us know you're watching.